Today's video was brought to you by Sony Malaysia. Today I'm going to share with you 5 tips on how to take better photos of your pets and for my case, it's my two cats that I have the pleasure of being a slave to I mean being quarantined with Oof So since every pet owner is probably going to be taking a couple thousand photos of their pets during this quarantine period, I thought it would be the perfect time for me to share some pet photography tips We're going to go from shooting angles to lighting tricks all the way to selecting the most suitable lenses for photographing your pets with So let's get right to it the first tip is to shoot at your pet's eye level. So if your pet is on the floor, that means getting down low. By doing so, your photos are not going to look like they were shot from the perspective of a towering human looking down at your cat. Instead, it's going to look more like the photo was shot from the perspective of another fellow animal. It feels a bit more personal. However, this is not a rule that you must follow for good pet photos. This is just a general rule of thumb for you to keep in mind. For example, I tend to always photograph my cats from their eye level unless I have a good reason to shoot them from above or below. So as with anything that's creative, it's important to use your own judgment on this one. And also, if your camera has it, enable animal eye autofocus. It makes every single sense to use it if it is available since this kind of tech was developed quite specifically for photographing animals. It speeds everything up because it allows for a lot more freedom of movement when it comes to framing. And I also like to pair it with a lens that has a very fast autofocus motor like the 7200G Master to really get the most out of their eye tracking technology. It's amazing stuff, the tracking is rock solid most of the time, but do you need this feature for great pet photos? No. But I can safely say that the difference with and without this feature is that you'll be ending up with a lot more shots that are in focus using it versus not. This is not yet a feature that you are going to see on every single camera, but for now you'll find it on many of Sony's mirrorless cameras like this a7 III that I'm using here. I'll put a list of Sony cameras in the description that do have this animal eye tracking feature in case you want to check if your camera has it or if you're looking for a camera that does have it. Now for this third tip, I would say that it applies quite specifically for cats, and that is to try photographing your cats in low light, intentionally. And this is so you can photograph them with more dilated pupils so that their eyes look shinier and beadier and bigger. To show you the difference it makes, here's a comparison between a cat photo taken in a bright room versus a dark room. Now we are talking about low light shooting, so I would recommend attempting this with a camera that has at least a decent low light performance. But more than that, more importantly, you should be using a bright and fast lens for something like this. I would personally go for something that's at least f2.8 or brighter. The 7200G Master I'm using is an f2.8, which for a zoom is pretty bright. This is internally stabilized as well, so the built-in optical steady shot certainly helps me get away with longer exposure times as well for more light. But this tip is certainly for times when you want to photograph your cat in a way that makes them look cute or pretty. If I wanted my cats to look more badass, then by all means, I would do the inverse of this tip and go ahead and shoot them in bright light. So that way I get that slit iris look, something like over here. Yeah, that's right, Coco. And the fourth tip is to use a catch light. Now, this is a similar technique that's used by portrait photographers and also cinematographers when it comes to lighting faces, and you can apply it to your pet photos as well. A catch light is when you see a reflection of a light source inside your subject's eyes. It gives them that extra glint. It makes your subject to look more alive. Catch lights can occur naturally in your photos, especially if you're shooting near a big light source, but when they don't show up, simply hold a small light source above your lens and very likely you have just created a catch light. Just make sure it's dim enough so it doesn't mess with your exposure. For me, I like to do this with my Aperture MC because it's really small and really easy to control and it's dimmable, but you can totally use your phone's flashlight for this if you don't have one of these. And finally, it is very, very important to pick the correct focal length for the job. Now, there is no correct lens for pet photography, but different focal lengths will give you vastly different flavors of pet photos. Typically, when it comes to my pets, I like to shoot at a shorter focal length, something like 24 mils or 35 mils. I've got a 2470 f4 here, and this on the wider end is just right for my liking. Using a shorter lens like this gives your photos a bit more of a close-up look because the camera is actually physically closer to your pets when you are framing them up. The photos have a more intimate feeling to them, as if you're really right up in there with your furry friend. It gives you the sense of having a close bond with your subject, kind of like when you're sticking your face right up in your cat's nose. The new FE 20mm f1.8 G and also the 24mm f1.4 G Master are great lenses for this kind of shooting as well, and I just recently reviewed those two lenses, so I'll leave a link down below as well for any of you who want to check out those two lenses. But sometimes I like to photograph my cats with a longer lens like the 70-200G Master for a more glamorous portrait look. 
So what I mean by glamorous portrait look means that the images have less perspective distortion, everything's more proportionate, and it's more flattering on faces. And this is exactly why lenses like the 85mm f1.4 G Master are used so widely by portrait photographers. In fact, my friend Jace from Lens Ivory decided to do a quarantine portrait shoot with that exact lens, so if you're interested to check that out, over here. And shooting longer also means more bokeh. If you like creamy bokeh in your shots, then this G Master is amazing when it comes to that. I mean, it shouldn't come as a surprise because smoothly rendered bokeh is an expected outcome from any G Master lens from Sony. Shooting tele also compresses your background more, meaning you're seeing less of your background, and you can actually use that to your advantage to exclude or at least minimize boring or distracting backgrounds. So those are my five tips for pet photography. Let me know down in the comments below as well if you have any tips of your own that you would like to share with us. So that is it for today. You can stay safe and enjoy the rest of your quarantine by watching more of my videos over here because Latte won't get his ass out of my face until you do so.